This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. I've been asked by our clients for years to describe backcountry hunting. They ask me what it's like. Is it fun? Is there a lot of game? And then they ask me, is it cold? And is it hard work? My answer to those questions is to watch this show and you'll know everything that you need to about hunting mule deer in the backcountry. Travis has taken a role in our office as point man for Western big game hunting, and he has a love for hunting the backcountry areas. He has a deep desire to be sitting on a horse miles from the nearest road, classing for mule deer or listening for bugling elk. And he understands that in the wilderness, nothing is given and everything is earned. It is for this reason that Travis and so many of our clients make their annual journey to the most remote areas left in the Western United States. This week, Travis is driving into a backcountry trailhead base camp where he will saddle up and ride deep into a roadless area of Western Wyoming. All the trusty steeds. This is the first time that Travis has hunted from this camp. So his first job is to thoroughly check out the camp and the surroundings, see where he will be sleeping and make sure that the whole camp and operation is well put together. Then go meet the cook, sign his licenses and do paperwork. Get settled into his wall tent and get everything ready to start hunting the next day. So our guide Ward is gonna grab a couple horses that we're riding tomorrow and saddle them up and put our scabbards on and make sure that everything's adjusted accordingly so that we don't have any you know, mishaps when we're on the trail early in the morning. So pretty thankful for that. After a great dinner with the guides and other hunters, everyone went to bed, but sleep didn't last long. 4 a.m. comes early in hunting camp as the guides awake early to saddle the horses and get ready to ride out well before dawn while the hunters eat their breakfast. The goal is to be in the glass as early as possible with the dream of catching a big mossy horned buck before he disappears into the cover to bed for the day. Well, we got up early and left camp around 3.30 this morning. Two and a half hour ride up into this far back basin that you can see here, just absolutely beautiful country. Um, you, could, you could hear bulls bugling before it even got light out, but we're searching for big mule deer bucks. Today's the opener and we spotted some deer and saw several bucks, one pretty decent buck, probably high 160s, but you know, first day of the hunt, so we're gonna keep looking. We're gonna ride down to the bottom and head up over the top and check out another basin. See what it finds. I absolutely love the the horseback overall experience from a hunting adventure in that it's very traditional. Um, it's not easy and therefore, you know, when it all comes together or even during the hunt, um, it's just so rewarding and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. So this morning was pretty eventful, of course. We saw several bucks, although not the tall, heavy, and wide one we're looking for. You know, I'm looking for a you know, 170 or better with some inch class and just didn't, didn't find it this morning, but uh, saw lots of game. So this morning we rode up to the, over the saddle and did some more glassing, spent the afternoon up here. Now we're gonna get back on the horses and run this ridge all the way back uh, towards camp and, and get some dinner. So hopefully we bump into something on the way. 
this area is well known to have great mule deer hunting. And Travis and his guide ward are glassing and moving from basin to basin, covering a lot of miles on their horses and spotting deer and elk along the way. The most effective way to hunt this country is by staying high in elevation, setting up on vantage points and glassing long range. We use good optics. And this week, Travis is using the new Burris Signature HD 10x42 binoculars and Signature HD spotting scope. This is crystal clear optics that will allow him to glass the vast wilderness. I was utterly amazed as we were deer hunting how many elk I saw, how many bulls I saw, and how many bugles were going on. I mean, and this is a camp that we, we conduct elk hunts out of as well, both archery and, and rifle. And, you know, I was just astonished by the vol sheer volume of elk and, and how many bulls we saw. It was, it was utterly amazing. After spending a full day of hunting and seeing a lot of game, Travis returns to camp, hopeful for the next day. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles, a passion for precision, every barrel, every rifle. Just like the day before, wake up early, saddle the horses, and ride out in the dark to a vantage point to start glassing as early as possible. Where's the big bull to the cow? Oh, I see a singular cow. At first light, they spotted elk. This place is loaded with elk and some big bulls. But Travis is after deer and it wasn't long before his guide spotted a buck and they moved in to take a closer look. This buck isn't quite what Travis is looking for, and in a few years, he will be a stud. But for now, Travis will pass and keep hunting. They move to yet another vantage point and glass more country, grab a nap, and then glass more of this incredible landscape. It's been unseasonably warm and the terrain is shaded by a blanket of smoke from the wildfires burning all across the western states. The smoke hangs above the mountains like a cloud bank. The combination of smoke and warm temperatures has the deer buried in the timber. The only thing Travis can do is keep glassing, stay persistent, and know that eventually it always pays off. So the sun is about to go down and it's cooled off quite a bit. Ward came back over and joined us and spotted a buck moving quite a ways up on the hillside over there. and Looks like a pretty good buck bedded back down and so I think we're going to grab the horses go get a closer look he's got a pretty good frame With time running out in the day, Travis and Ward cut the distance down and make a move to get into position to first get a look at the buck and also get a shot if he's big enough. 
if darkness doesn't set in first. On this backcountry hunt, Travis has elected to hunt with a lightweight and scabbard-friendly rifle, and he chose the new Bergara Premier Series Mountain 2.0, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum and topped with the Burris Eliminator 3 laser scope. He is shooting 180 grain custom, hand-loaded Pendleton ammunition. The rifle is sub-MOA accurate, and Travis is confident out to 700 yards with this rifle, and it is the perfect gun for backcountry hunting. This segment of Checking Zero is sponsored by the Adventure Armory, rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. With darkness closing in fast, Travis and his guide have moved in and are taking a closer look at a buck that at a distance showed a lot of promise. He's close. He might be like right at 170, right in there, but it's hard to tell with all the branches. Last night was awesome. You know, Ward spotted a really good buck, oh, about a mile away or so in the trees. And uh, after taking a closer look at him, we decided to put a stock on and uh, rode a ways up the hill snuck into about 260 yards of them, ended up passing, just didn't quite have, you know, the width and the height we were looking for, but a uh, great buck nonetheless. Um, you know, highest 160, something like that, maybe 170. Um, today we're gonna go to a different drainage and check it out and uh, see if we can come up with that, uh, that big buck. This is big, rugged country, and the animals here are hardy and strong. There are not a lot of deer, but this is why such big deer are found in these high alpine areas of the western states. But you have to be patient, willing to spend days in the saddle and hours in the glass to turn up a handful of deer, and always with the hope that you will get your eyes on one of the massive wilderness bucks for which this area is legendary. See that white rock in that drainage for that big opening down there? The yeah, biggest right. white rock yeah. out in the middle? Yeah. Go to the right, like, 250 yards. Um, you know, the trails are well cut. You know, the guides, especially my guide, they all they all know it very well. In fact, we were going up and down in the dark, and, and Ward didn't skip a beat. He knows this area like the back of his hand. And You know, the stock that we use is very reliable, very safe. We didn't have any issues, and uh, that allows you to unwind and kind of enjoy the moment and uh, be present, so to speak, on things that are going on around you and you're not worried about having an accident. So that was, that was a very cool situation. Well, today's been a little slower than the last couple of days. Uh, we rode up to a different drainage this morning early and found quite a few deer, but they've pretty much been all does and uh, we've been sitting up on this knob all day and it's now um, about to get evening time. The sun's about to go down. And, um, you know, it's just been really hot, really dry and really smoky. It's making glassing pretty difficult right now, especially on this east, this east facing slope. But we're gonna stay, stay in it and just uh, be patient and keep, uh, keep on the glass and try and turn up some bucks.
as the sun sets on another day of hunting, darkness doesn't last long. And within hours, Travis and his guide are riding out again into the darkness and back on another vantage point as the sun starts to rise and shed light on the incredible landscape. As with all of the previous days, they ride, glass, ride, and glass some more, covering as much country as possible with their glass and their horses. And it isn't long before the wind starts to blow, the smoke starts to lift out of the basins, and a storm starts to move in. For the evening hunt today, we rode further away from camp along this ridge and got back into this basin that we haven't glassed yet. And uh, although we found a few deer, still young bucks, about three-year-olds at most. Um, so now that we have a uh, little bit of daylight left, we're gonna kind of pick our way back with the horses and, and glass this other basin before we head back to camp and have a significant change in weather, which is good, it's gotten a lot colder. Um, it's supposed to rain a little bit tomorrow during the day, so hopefully that gets the bucks moving around a little bit more. Will this weather front get the deer up and moving before Travis's week in Wyoming comes to an end? Find out after this short commercial break. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Back on yet another ridge top early the next morning, it isn't long before Travis and Ward start spotting deer in the pre-dawn light. It's significantly colder, and the deer are on the move during that magic hour before the sun rises high into the sky, and the guys know that they don't have long before the deer disappear into cover. Ward spots a big buck going over the skyline, and they race to get into position for a shot in the drainage over the ridge behind them. They quickly find a good buck. He's feeding across the drainage on a steep hillside. Travis crawls into a prone position using his backpack for a rest and uses the Eliminator 3 laser scope to range the buck at 318 yards. He's got the lit aiming point, elevates the dot to the vitals on the deer, and adjusts to compensate for the left to right wind, and squeezes the trigger. Travis's first shot was low in the shoulder, but a quick follow-up shot put him down for good. Yes. Well, that was a good cap to a hard week. Yeah, it was. Good job, Ward. Yeah, you Much too. appreciated. Good shooting, man. Good first one hit him pretty good. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. No. Thank you. Oh, man. Yep. 
solid four point. This was a hunt of a lifetime for me. It's something I've always wanted to do. You know, chase big, big mule deer in the high country via horseback. And once I was able to harvest that buck and a dream came true, you know, one of my favorite parts of a hunt like this is just slowing things down and, and, and uh, enjoying the moment, especially the pack out. You know, watching Ward with the, with the buck and, and, the, and the meat on the saddle and uh, it just kind of time stands still at that point and kind of reflecting back on, on the number of days that we've hunted together and just, you know, accomplishing the goal that I've always had and, and just, it just was a, just a dream come true for me. After breaking down the buck and taking out all of the venison, Travis and his guide load the heavy pack animal up and start the ride out of the backcountry and down into base camp. This is a lot warmer ride back to camp than Travis had experienced just a year before when after shooting a six point bull, they rode through belly deep snow and sub-zero temperatures to return to camp. With the sense of accomplishment of yet another successful wilderness hunt fresh in his heart and hunting season just getting started, Travis returned to the office where he books hunters and fishermen on world-class adventures all across North America. In fact, if you'd like to book this hunt for yourself, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.